Welcome to the Reality Channel. We have the great pleasure today welcoming Dr. Sagiri Kitao, a senior fellow at Reality. She will talk about her research on aging demographics, women's labor supply, and macroeconomy. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to talk about my research. I'm Sagiri Kitao of Reality. I'm a senior fellow. And today's talk is going to be based on two projects that um, I worked on at Rieti. And uh, both projects are joint work with my co-author, uh, Minamo Mikoshiba of the uh, University of Tokyo. So the first one is uh, females, the elderly, and also males, demographic aging and the macroeconomy in Japan. So this project is already um, uh, published as a Rieti's discussion paper, as well as as a journal article. And the second one is uh, why women work the way they do, rules of uh, fiscal policies. So this is still work in progress. So what are the research questions? So as you know, uh, Japan is facing very rapid and massive demographic aging, and uh, it's expected that the labor force is going to shrink very rapidly. So we want to understand how a change in the labor force will affect the macroeconomy and the fiscal situations. And in doing so, uh, we like to focus on not just the number of workers or the participation rates, but also more details about the employment, especially employment types of different individuals and also wages of, uh, in particular, women and the elderly. In doing so, we build a quantitative macroeconomic model. So it's a quantitative model so that we can talk about the numbers and it's a macroeconomic model so that we can you know, incorporate the interaction of uh, different agents, uh, individuals as households and the firms that produce output and also the government. And uh, this model is going to be populated by different types of individuals, Japanese men and women of different ages and, uh, and in different employment status. And we're going to simulate the demographic changes that are predicted, projected to happen over the coming decades. And we want to quantify the impacts of these changes in, on macroeconomy and the fiscal situations. And we also want to investigate how you know, the results uh, are going to be affected when there's a change in the labor supply of women and the elderly. So why do we care about women? Uh, so this picture shows the uh, labor force participation rates of men and women over the life cycle. On the horizontal axis, we have age going from 20 to 80 years old. And on the vertical axis, uh, we have participation rates in percentage. So in their early 20s, men and women are not too different. But after you know, 25 or so, women start to leave the labor force and uh, labor force participation declines and deviate from that of men. And then uh, uh, after age uh, uh, 35 or so, some women come back to work, but the difference never disappears. But this uh, so-called M-shaped uh, uh, participation profile of women uh, is said to be disappearing. So lots of women are working and the participation rates has been rising. And this blip in the participation rates at childbearing ages uh, seem to be disappearing. So are we just happy about that? But if you look at the more details of the employment, uh, that shows a very different picture. So this picture shows the distribution of the employment types of men and women, men on the left and women on the right. And the blue is the regular work and uh, orange is the contingent work and the yellow is the self-employed. So the Japanese labor market is known to have a very peculiar uh, feature of uh, you know, two-tiered labor market system. So people work either as a contingent worker or as a regular worker. So regular jobs are much more stable, pay more, and uh, less susceptible to the shocks. And the contingent workers tend to have much more fluctuation in employment and they earn less. And when the economy is hit by bad shocks, for example, the financial crisis or the COVID crisis, it is the contingent workers who tend to lose their jobs first. So as you see, uh, most men work on the regular jobs, but for women, uh, regular jobs go down after age 25 or so, and it never goes, goes up. And uh, some women come back to uh, work after childbearing ages, but they mostly come back as a contingent worker. And the uh, next picture shows the difference in earnings. So on the vertical axis, uh, there's the earnings 
by employment type in units of uh, millions of uh, Japanese yen in 2015. So as you can see, uh, there's a, a big difference between men and women, uh, even on the same employment type. But there's an even bigger difference between uh, wages of regular workers and wages of uh, contingent workers. So most women uh, switch from regular worker to contingent workers and then go down to the uh, lower uh, wage profile. So what we did in the uh, paper was to simulate uh, the economic uh, changes um, and uh, you know, the effects of the uh, demographic uh, aging in the baseline, assuming that there's no change in the labor force participation or employment type or their uh, wages. But we also considered the alternative scenarios. First scenario is, um, um, you know, we assume that the female participation rates are going to increase as projected by JILBT. And in the second scenario, we assume that the employment type distribution also change and uh, it will converge to the uh, distribution of men. Uh, that would be an extreme scenario. And the third one is uh, also another extreme scenario, but uh, we assume that uh, productivity and wages are also going to converge to those of men. So in the first scenario, if there's an increase in the participation, uh, that will uh, raise the labor inputs that can be used in the production. So by 2030, the total labor input of the economy could increase by as much as uh, 6% and uh, uh, by 8% by 2045. And the fiscal burden evaluated in terms of the uh, percentage of total consumption. So you can think of it as uh, you know, the reduction in the consumption tax that can be achieved by a change in the female labor force participation. Uh, that will be 1.1% by 2030 and 1.5% 1 by 2045. So so these are big changes, but it's not so huge. Uh, it's not large enough to eradicate any concerns about their uh, demographic aging and the fiscal situation. But uh, effects are going to be very different if we also assume that there's a change in the employment type and the change in the productivity of women. So if the employment type are going to types are going to change, and if more women workers are regular workers instead of the contingent workers, there will be even bigger change in the labor input and the fiscal uh, burden is going to go down uh, by uh, larger percentage points. And then on top of that, if there's also an increase in the uh, wages and productivity, uh, change in the labor input and the fiscal burden will be even larger. So what this result suggests is that, you know, it's not really enough to think about the labor force participation, but it's also uh, uh, very important to look at how uh, women work under what kind of jobs and how productive they are. So, um, this takes us to the next project and the next question. So that's, you know, um, what, uh, what's going on in the labor market in Japan, but we want to understand why women work the way they do. So in terms of the educations, um, you know, women are as e almost equally as educated as men, and they're very healthy, they live very long. So highly educated, healthy uh, people are not working as much as they could, and we want to understand why. So what we do in the next project is to examine more carefully how and why women choose the way they work. And in doing so, uh, we use a panel data set called the Japan Panel Survey of Consumers and following a cohort of women over their life cycle. And uh, what the data analysis reveals uh, to us was the following. So this picture shows very different uh, labor uh, market behavior uh, between the single women and the married women. On the left, we have the picture of single women and the blue uh, line represents the fraction of share of the regular workers and the red is the contingent workers and the black is the not in labor force, not working. And as you can see, uh, if you just look at the single worker, single women, uh, most of them work as a regular worker, as regular workers, and that the share does not really decline until uh, late uh, 40s or so. And, uh, but if you look at the married women on the left, um, the regular worker, the share is very small. It's about 20% and it doesn't change over the life cycle. And the uh, uh, share of the not in labor force starts at very high at 70% or so, and then it declines monotonically. So lots of women go back to work and uh, the way they go back to work is not you know, coming back to the regular job, but you know, most of them find a contingent work. 
So, of course, people are going to move from single to married or married to singles. But the major change that, uh, you know, uh, women experience when they get married is to uh, 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 switch their jobs from the regular workers to either an all-in labor force or contingent. So that move seems to be very critical in explaining, you know, how uh, labor force participation or the employment distribution changes over time. So what explains this change? So there are lots of suspects. And uh, in this project, in the paper, uh, what we want to understand is the roles of the fiscal policy. So there are uh, so-called uh, famous roles that may prevent individuals, especially uh, married women, from working as much as they could. So some roles called like one or three wall, uh, hexaman and nokabe in Japanese. So there's a spousal deduction for dependent spouse conditional on um, uh, earnings less than 1.03 million yen. And then there's no earnings tax uh, for earnings below this uh, threshold as well. And then there's another uh, major wall uh, called the 130 wall or the 1.3 million yen. Uh, so there's a, you know, uh, there's a very generous uh, social security system in Japan. So you have to pay a lot for the social security, uh, public pension, health insurance, and long-term care. But if you're married and if your husband is covered uh, by the social insurance as a category two workers, then uh, you could be exemption. You could get the exemption from all the, you know, the social insurance taxes as a category three insured, provided that you don't make more than 1.3 million yen. And then there's another uh, wall called the uh, 150 wall. So if your earnings are less than 1.5 million yen, yen then uh, your spouse can get the special uh, spousal deductions. And uh, these are, you know, the uh, policy uh, regulate policy rules. But many private firms also provide uh, spousal benefits using uh, these numbers as a, as their own cutoffs. So what we want to do in this uh, project is to understand, you know, what uh, these policies are doing in terms of uh, 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 female labor force participation behavior. And our uh, preliminary results suggest that these walls are very effectively uh, preventing many married women from working. And uh, removing these policies um, can, you know, um, induce a very large number of women uh, to switch uh, from a contingent job or not in labor force to regular jobs. And as a result, they could accumulate more skills over the life cycle, making more, um, and uh, that they can also contribute to their uh, fiscal system. So that's the preliminary uh, uh, results that, uh, uh, which we hope will put together uh, sometime soon. So what are the policy implications? So we've been talking about the policy, so all of these are policy implications. But what I guess I want to emphasize is that a set of desirable policies uh, might change over time. So, you know, a set of policies that are very uh, desirable and suitable under some economic situations could be very uh, different under the different, um, you know, economic environment, and they could, you know, uh, be obstacles for growth as well. And the uh, Japanese economy um, um, is facing a lot of challenges and it's imperative to enhance productivity of the economy. And uh, in order to do so, we need to re-examine the policies that you know, uh, worked quite well, but may not be so uh, functioning well in their, in their current situations. And especially the uh, regulations that could be holding back work and growth incentives. So hopefully we can put together the results and then post a new working paper, discussion paper. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for taking the time to enlighten us on your current work and its policy implications.